the 510K process used by the FDA is to identify devices that are uh, substantially equivalent to another device that's been approved. The safety of the initial or the, the predicate device is not taken into account when another device comes in um, with a 510K application. So they don't have to prove that it's safe and effective, just that it's like another device that's already on the market. The 510K process is used just to prove substantial equivalence, so it just has to show that it's like another device that's already been cleared by the FDA. So the initial clearance may have been for um, a nerve stimulator used for epilepsy, and these patients uh, that have been implanted with this device have no other options. They've tried the drug option and it hasn't worked for them. And so the risk for those patients, um, it, it has to do with their day-to-day -day quality of life. Uh, and so they're willing to take that risk. And there are a lot of adverse events, uh, including death, that occur when those devices are used. Uh, then you have the same device getting approved for other uses. So that same device that was used for epilepsy and that risk was understood would then be used for migraines, would be used for incontinence, would be used for uh, hiccups, obesity, uh, and the the issues with that device, the risk profile is probably not acceptable to people that just want to be treated for migraines or incontinence.